Hey everybody, Paul here from Warden Farm. It's September 1st, it's 10.30 in the morning. It's 86 degrees outside with 79% humidity. I got the ice vest on, that way I can keep cool while I'm out here checking the hives. Being it's September, there's a couple things we gotta do. One is you gotta check your varroa mite load. You wanna make sure that your mites are down and that way you don't end up with diseases that'll take your bees out in the winter. And how do you do that? A mite wash. You take 300 bees, you wash them in either alcohol or soap detergent, whichever you prefer. Count how many mites are there. You want no more than seven mites per 300 bees. If you got seven, I would treat. Any higher than seven, you definitely have to treat. And that way you start knocking down your mite load. How do you treat? There's so many different ways you can treat. Oxalic acid, there's Formic Pro, you gotta be careful because you can cook your queen, and there's others that you can use. Read up on it, that way you can see what works for you and works for your girls. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you got enough food space for them. Because with the goldenrod flow, you gotta add supers on so that nectar can be stored away and not take up space where the queen has to lay. Speaking of queens, if your queen is laying in a good tight pattern, close together, you got a good queen. If you got a spotty queen and she's laying all over the place, now is the time to crush her and get a new queen. Because the queens are getting to be where they're hard to find. By the middle of the month, they probably won't be able to be found here in eastern North Carolina. You might be able to get some by mail but you're getting down to the end of time of looking for queens, especially if you got to replace them. One of the other things I do is I look to see if I need to rotate boxes. If the queen has got the top box completely full, I go ahead and reverse it. I'll take the top box, put it below. Usually the bottom box has lots of room, especially the, if the queen's not laying it. Queens will lay upwards. So she'll move up into this upper box. She'll lay like crazy and that'll expand your winter bees. But you gotta make sure you got enough food and pollen in there because they need that to feed the young to expand the brood nest. If you are feeding your bees, feed them one to one sugar water. You don't wanna start feeding two to one yet. It's too warm, it's too early. You wanna wait till end of October, November when you start feeding the heavier sugar water because that way the bees can put that away for food and they won't use it for building any honeycomb. One other item you wanna think about doing is start building some candy boards. Last year, Ben from Sandy Bottom Bees came out and him and I, we built some uh, candy boards. And there's a video out there on it, on us two doing that. Go ahead, check it out. Uh, go on over to Sandy Bottom Bees, show him some love. Hit his like button, subscribe to his channel, and that will help Ben out as well. But you gotta build the candy boards so you got them ready for when October, November, December gets here because you'll be wanting to put additional food on to help your girls get through the winter. And lastly, we're still in hurricane season here. We still got September, October, and into November for hurricane season here in Eastern North Carolina. So I keep the screw in screws, uh, that hold the straps that I put over the hives, leave them in place until this is over. Once it's over, take them out and store them away and then you don't have to worry about hurricanes for a few months. So now we're getting ready to get into the bees. I'm putting on my ventilated vest because it helps keep me cool. It's also quite lighter than the canvas vest, which I did finally wash my canvas vest and it needed it. So now that we got the suit on, we're going to go outside and start working that one beehive first that I combined. That's the one I really want to see, make sure that they got along together, that the queen's still alive, and that she's laying. And then we'll check the other bees and go to the stronger hives, do mite washes. I'm not going to show that to you because I've shown you that before. And you can look at my other videos if you want to learn how to do a mite wash. So coming out here to the hives, I got some screens 
to add on that help for ventilation of the hives being hot. And the reason for that is when we come up to the hives, just listen to the bees fanning. And when we come down to the real strong hives, what do you hear these bees? Them bees are fanning, trying to regulate the heat inside the hive. So, let's take the cover off and start checking out these girls. And see if we can reduce one of the boxes or none of the boxes. Let's get rid of that and that. These little cockroach looking things. Take this inner cover off. Okay, this was the box that we added and the one below it because they had no queen. So we're just gonna pull up this box and see if there's anything stored in it. And if not, we're gonna get rid of it. As long as they didn't start storing food in this. But look at that. We have brewed. Lots of larvae. Holy smokes. Lots of larvae. Wow. This is awesome. But I may move this one down and the other one up depending upon what I see. Oh my goodness. There are eggs in the empty cells. A queen cup that's charged. Wow, we don't want that. Not this time of year. So we're gonna have to take a look around, make sure that there's no more queen cups because we got eggs too. As long as we got eggs and lots of larvae in different stages, tells me we got us a good queen and I don't want her replaced. Got some drone cells, so much larva. Good gracious. Yeah, this queen's gone to town. See, that's the sign of a good queen. And on this side, the empty cells are just full of larvae and eggs. Let's take this off. Look at Put it right there. Put that back in there. See if they're storing food here. If they are, this is going up. Nothing on that frame. All the newspaper is gone. This is all pollen and nectar. So you can see, hopefully, the different shades of yellow pollen and nectar, which is over here. Whew, for being warm, I'm sure glad the girls are calm. Oh yeah, this has got lots of brood, some drone cells, more brood. I do not see any 
eggs or larvae again. All nectar. Holy smokes, that's a lot of nectar. And brood. But when that hatches, that's gonna be all nectar. That's what they're doing in all of these frames, I think, is hatching them out. I'm gonna store nectar in it. So this is going up on top. Man, is it hot. I'm sweating like crazy. Since this box is going to go on top, we're going to just set this one here. And we're going to set this one down below. This one on top of that one. And cover it up to keep the robbers out. Now we can get rid of this newspaper. So the big thing is, in this hive, combining them, strengthened it. Pollen, pollen, good. I think I see a queen cell on the side away from the camera. Okay, we have nectar capped. There is a queen cup, supersedure, not charged. So since it is not charged, let's get rid of it. Don't need that. Look for our queen. I don't believe she's here because there's no eggs, no larva. Whew, sweat just running down my face. Might have to do this hive and take a break. Do a hive, take a break. But I can tell you this hive needs food. There's many bees that are in it now. And there's our queen. She just went to the other side. Right there's our queen. Right there. Unmarked. So that's what I wanted to see is our queen. Let's keep her in the shade. See if she lays an egg somewhere. Oh, there's eggs all in this frame. Okay, we're gonna put her back. Nice and gentle, since our queen is on that frame. So our queen's in this box, so we gotta be careful. Now we can see what's going on in this bottom box. We know where our queen is. And we can see if they're doing anything down here. It feels heavy on one side. Oh yeah, look at that, nectar. So they got nectar. Yep, nectar, nectar, nectar. Bottom board is clean. I don't see if I run into frames that aren't being used. I could swap them with ones that are. That's 
that's what I didn't want to happen. Is to have bees everywhere. Crapola. <laughs> well, hey. That's one way to force me to do something. Okay. These hives are hot. They're sliding. <sighs> We're going to put the purple one down below. Set this one off in the front. There's a mad cluster of bees right there. Whoops. I'm sorry, girls. To swap out frames. Get these bees back to where they need to be. There. So let's take out empty frames. Put in good frames of nectar. It's got a little bit of nectar, not much. This has got brood. So it's going right there. So the bees will take care of that brood. A little bit of pollen. This frame's got brood. So we're going to swap it out. putting the brood in the bottom. Just shaking the bees off of that. More brood. Bees can take care of that. Good thing is that's some good clean cells. This one here has nectar, so it's going right next to the feeder. Space them. Now we're going to put the queen's box on. But of course, I gotta get the bees out the way. Okay, girls. Go slow so we can get you out the way. Whew. Whew. That could have been a disaster. Big time. All right. All right. Let's stand these over here. I'm going to stand this one up on end. Whew. That gives them room to store nectar. Let's put this cover back on. But I want to give them some 
air. And that's where this ventilated cover comes in handy because it's, the screen is up above it. It allows for ventilation. And when you set the cover on, it's got a gap. That will allow for airflow. For the bees, just like that. Okay. So, one September, we reduced it. Queen right. And we added a, what are those, top cover screen. To help keep them bees cool. And we're good to go.